What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Dateable, a show all about modern dating, where Julie Kraftchik and I, UHU, <laughs> are your investigative reporters on why people do the things they do, why they say the things that they say, and how do we deal with it all. Love it. Yeah, because we're in <laughs> season 13. I cannot believe it's still season 13. So maybe we have some newbies. Maybe we have people that have been with us since season one. I still, I, it still shocks me every day that we have been doing this for over five years. I wonder if that's how married people feel. They're like, I can't believe we've been married <laughs> for five fucking years. You, ain't, you might be my longest relationship I've ever been in. This year, you surpassed my longest relationship. My longest relationship was for yes. five years, and this year, we're going on six. So. Right, we're going on six. Yeah, you've oh surpassed my, my longest relationship. We are life partners forever. Well, it's a it's a success story. I found Julie, not through an app, but through mutual friends. We bonded over wine. You know, and then we created something very beautiful. Well, uh, technically, we met through an app, kind of. Not an app, well, but through... an, a service, a, so, a social matchmaking service. Yes, <laughs> that I ran. So it wasn't like you and I yeah. signed up for this, but <laughs> yes. But it was a success story. And if that service were still in service today, we could have given them a testimonial. <laughs> Julie, bring it back. 500 brunches. Let's go. Did you ever Our reach first 500 sponsor. brunches? <laughs> no, I didn't. I did go on a shit ton of brunches. And I know, I mean, I think this is the way to be. It's just getting out into the world. We had the best story today on our Facebook. Um, I just want to give a shout out oh, to Julia, Julia LaSalle. Speaking of being out in the wild, just making shit happen. She was talking about how she was master dating with blueberry pancakes and a shit ton bacon. of bacon <laughs> i mean that sounds like a pretty freaking great master date um and then you're like how could this day get better how could this day get better <laughs> and then some guys like sees what's going on and was like hey that's how this day gets better and then got her number and texted, and texted. her right away i feel like our entire facebook community is going to be out on master dates this weekend <laughs> yes, with all the pancakes and bacon, even the vegetarians are like, whatever, <laughs> whatever. whatever. This is how I, I don't find need this. This is how I find my person. I'm in for it. <laughs> just gotta smell like bacon. That's cool. I don't need to eat it. <laughs> it's all good. Um, this episode though is pretty damn funny. A little clue. Fuck boys. Fuck boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they? Fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's the best about this? So we had Kane Holloway, who's a comedian, so it's going to be funny regardless. And we initially came on with a slightly different topic because yeah. we were on his podcast, Don't Take Bullshit from Fuckers. Both of us were guests on that podcast. You may have heard us re-air some of those in the bonus season. And one thing he started talking about with UA's episode, but didn't go too deep, was mm -hmm. about how his current girlfriend made the first move. So we're like, oh, that would be a good topic. And it was, and there's definitely tidbits in here for people. But when we started talking, we're like, nope, this is shaping up to be about why Kate is, <laughs> it is not possible for him to be a fuckboy. Like, how he cannot actually be a fuckboy, which ended up being a way better topic. Even though he tried, tried, <laughs> tried, is just not in his blood, which is also a great way to dispel the myth that men are born fuckboys or they just mm -hmm. have these fuckboy tendencies. No, not every guy has fuckboy tendencies. You kind of have to really try. And Kane tried and he couldn't get there. So I had some deep thoughts the, the other day. Oh, <laughs> just the other day. <laughs> I mean, I have deep thoughts every day, but specifically around the topic of fuck boys. I was like, okay, why? You know, like things that people say about fuck boys, right? Like they lead you on, they say certain things to kind of, you know, make someone maybe fall prey or like fall into the trap a bit. Mm -hmm. And maybe they don't have intentions of really being in a relationship, but they kind of let people f believe that to try to sleep with people essentially mm -hmm. and or maybe like you know jerk like jerk you around a little so you think yep. there's something there and then it's not really as much as you think so i was wondering like 
could there be fuck girls? Like, I feel like all this applies mm-hmm. to women, too. But you never hear anyone talking about fuck girls. Like, it's just not a... Like, fuck boys is, like, probably one of the most common dating terms this day and age. Mm-hmm. But you never hear fuck girls. So I did a little digging, and <laughs> there I'd actually like were... I like to see Julie's search history this night. Oh, I don't want anyone to ever see my search history. <laughs> What's the female equivalent of a fuckboy? Yeah, boy? no, so there are, okay, so there were quite a lot of articles in 2017 specifically about fuck mm. girls. Mm. It clearly did not take off. Clearly, right? No. So there's one that I found that was 12 signs you're actually a fuck girl. You want to hear some of the yes, signs? Yes, please. Okay. The first one is you post more selfies than any other pic. Okay. Weird. You text your ex every now and then. I could see this because, like, if a guy was doing this that didn't have intentions of getting back with the girl, we call them a fuckboy. Like, that's what people okay. would say. Um, you have your read receipts switched on. I don't know. how. I don't get that one. I don't. <laughs> I, like, I who think. uses read receipts? My mom tried to get me to do that. I'm like, hell no. I never do. <laughs> I feel like if you were a fuck boy or a fuck girl, you would want anything but read receipts. Or I guess it's more like you turn it on so you so the other person knows you read it and you still haven't responded back yeah. just to be an intentional asshole. That's what it's saying, actually. I'm reading it deeper. The power gets you off that you they they know you saw it and you didn't respond. Okay. Okay. Um, you don't refer to men by their names. I can kind of see this. Like, remember when we always talked about like our phone books being like Tinder, like the Tinder family? Yeah, it doesn't make you a fuck girl, though. It just means you're not. It just means you're normal. I think. <laughs> well, define normal, but yes, it probably means that you're a serial dater. Maybe not a fuck girl, or like you're just you're trying not to get your hopes up, right? Yes. You string guys along, and you ke- you've kept men on retainer to mm-hmm. so get attention. I think that one's probably applicable because we would say a fuck boy will keep like kind of breadcrumb you, right, to mm-hmm. keep you around. Um, you only date men with money. I think that's just a gold digger. I don't know if yeah. that's a fuck girl. You've broken the code, like being with a friend's significant oh, other. Oh, I cheating. see. I don't that's know. just bad. Juju. <laughs> and then you've left your gal pals or canceled on them just for the D. That's just called being horny. And your <laughs> gal pals would totally understand. <laughs> but I wonder if we were to like dissect all the stuff that makes, like, I'm sure there's an article, like the 12 things that makes you a fuck boy. Would we find reasons to say like that doesn't exist? Or did fuck girls really just not take off because it's not a thing? I, I feel like the article is flawed by design because what makes someone a fuckboy is not what they do, but what their intentions are. Mm-hmm. And so by saying, like, these are things that you do if you're a fuck girl doesn't really make sense because of what's the intention behind it. Right, right. I do think what comes with fuckboys, their intention is to play games, string along as many women as possible, and uh, and have women be okay with the fact that they're dating a bunch of other women and they never commit so if a woman's intentions were that as well yes i think that would make her a fuck girl yeah i know it's so fascinating i was like thinking about like have i dated a fuck boy before like, right on me on too i was thinking that too and i think like people i don't think i've i don't know it's so hard to tell because it's like if you relay something it's all how you like you know, interpret things. Mm-hmm. I think some, I think I've definitely been in situations where maybe like I thought it was more than it actually was, but was that because they had ill intentions or was it that they just were confused or, you know, p- testing the waters and like seeing how things were going? I don't know if it made them a fuck boy or just part of natural dating in some way. <laughs> but you and I have been hard at work this week. Oh I feel like I am. Have- I think we're a little delirious right now because this has been a killer week for the two of us, but we have something so exciting in store. We're not going to say too much because we 
you know, we're, we'll reveal it when we're ready. But I think it's going to really, like, I think people are going to love it. And it's going to greatly impact a lot of people that are listening to this podcast on a weekly basis. And we we kind of feel like we've been, it's almost been like we needed these five years to get to this point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we've been working on this for five years. And recently... <laughs> We felt like this was the right time to do it. So we've been heads down, really focused on on working on this thing that we're about to launch. And let's just say we cracked the code on something. Okay? We cracked the code. We'll we leave think it at this that. Is, we'll leave this it is, at that. This is the bee's knees, if kids still say that these days. Like, this is it. If there's one thing to look for, out for this year, this is it. And we can't wait to launch it. But we I can't just... launch it just yet. I just want to bring back the bee's knees also. <laughs> what does that even mean? It's what we're launching and the bee's knees. Those are the two things you need to stay aware <laughs> for in 2021. <laughs> the bee's knees. You just, whatever. Whatever that bees means. Knees. We'll figure it out. Uh, let's get into some announcements, shall we? Yeah, we had a great kickoff to Sounding Board 2.0 the other night. Mm -hmm. We did our first office hours coffee chat. Uh, I'm still working on the name, but I think you get the point. You basically get to pop in and ask UA and I any question that you have that's burning or listen to other people's this is in a group format. The whole piece of the sounding board is to have this supportive community. And I was blown away by the types of questions. They weren't like basic, annoying questions about dating. Like there were some really meaty ones, but also things that everyone can relate to. Like there was one that was said that I think everyone in the room was like, yep, yep been there been before. There. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's like group therapy in a way. And it's okay if you don't want to share. It's okay if you don't want to talk because you just learn so much by listening to other people share their own experiences. And I'm also impressed by how open and warm and kind everybody was who went to our office hours. So it creates such a safe space for mm -hmm. anybody to share or just to listen. Yep. And we are going to be starting up in September more of... You know, we're going to have more focused conversations around some like just really hot topics that a lot of people are discussing and wondering about. Like, I think since we've been doing this now for a while, we're starting to see the trends of the types of things that people want to dive into a little deeper. So we'll be doing that with our fabulous team of hosts that are little datables in training. <laughs> and um, we can't wait to kick that off. So if you want to get into the sounding board, we will have one more month at the initial rates and they will be going up in September on September 1st. So definitely get in on it now. If this is something you've been thinking about, it's a great opportunity, great community. I mean, what also warmed my heart when we did the office hours is a lot of the folks were like, I've been in here since day one. Yeah. This has made such an impact for me. So it was really nice to hear. We had a mix of new people and some of the people that have been here from the day we launched. So I thought that was really great to hear. Yes. Yeah, so get all the information at datablepodcast.com slash sounding board. A lot of you have been joining our Facebook group saying that you keep hearing about the sounding board on our podcast. Well, you're you're not going to stop hearing about it because this <laughs> is all we're really going to talk about. We truly believe in this idea of community and a curated, smaller, intimate community. So check it out. I mean, if you're just curious, check it out for one event or one happy hour and uh, let us know your feedback too. Mm -hmm. And and speaking of feedback, you can always give us feedback through Instagram. Follow us at Dateable Podcast. We're also on Twitter. We're not as active there, but same handle. And we're also on YouTube. These videos that Julie and I do that we put on makeup for, might as well <laughs> just pop into YouTube, watch like two seconds and be like, okay, that's what they look like. <laughs> exactly. You can see so much different dynamics than just our voices. I know life would be easier if we didn't even have YouTube, but we want to do it because it's nice to be in front of you all. And it gives us an, an opportunity to, you know, get ready and yeah, <laughs> not wear exactly. pajamas. And you get to see our recording environment. Yeah. You know? Life could be kind of weird if we were just never seeing anyone. And we were just constantly, just our voices were out there. Like we could be wearing anything at any time. 
people can imagine anything they want. Maybe keep it better that way, you know, just imagine whatever you want that we're wearing, like onesies. Yeah. Or that's bunny what suits, whatever. That's what we recorded every week. Just onesies, because it's not hot enough. <laughs> go to YouTube and find out. <laughs> go to YouTube, yes. How about every week we change up the onesie? So you have to go to, you have to go to YouTube to find out what it is. How is that for a teaser? And uh, just a last reminder is it really helps us when you give us reviews in Apple Podcasts. We had a guest recently tell us that is exactly how her manager booked her on our mm-hmm. on our show because her manager looks at how many reviews a podcast gets, and the more reviews you get, the more legit you appear to be so if you can give us five stars write a little nice blurb we really highly appreciate that because that's what helps us propel and grow um, in a direction that we wanted to go yeah and this guest was killer this has been someone you and i both wanted on the podcast for i would say at least a year now she is phenomenal we're going to have that episode coming soon and yeah this is what makes it happen she literally looked at the she looked at those reviews like ua said and booked with us mm-hmm, mm-hmm. apple podcast five stars give a little blurb and we will send you all the kisses Please. <laughs> it's karma for your love life right yes there. <laughs> yes do you feel that through your headphones right now just all the karma and the kissy is coming All your way. All the kisses.